And the first thing that I basically discovered with doing that was uh, Yeoman. Uh, because we went to create, you know, how are we going to create our application? And someone said, well, we should use Yeoman to do it. And so started looking into it and found out it's really pretty darn cool. So what is Yeoman? Is this going to work? All right, so why use Yeoman? All right, Yeoman is basically the thing that lets you get everything going that you need before you can really start coding stuff, right? So before you start, you got to decide, okay, how are we going to structure everything? You know, this is going to be a huge project. It's going to be sold and deployed on millions of sites, so we need to make sure that our structure is pretty good. Are we going to have boilerplate that we use? Uh, are we going to have a testing framework? What's that going to be, Jasmine or Mocha or whatever? Uh, how are we going to do builds? How are we going to do deploys? What kinds of JavaScript libraries are we going to need? Uh, do we want linting? Well, yes, probably. Uh, do we need minification? Do we need minification up front or at the end? Uh, do we want to work with live reload as we're working to increase productivity? All those things. There's different tools that will let you get all that stuff. So Yeoman is basically a workflow that lets you get all of those things using three different uh, applications. Yo which is the scaffolding app, uh, Grunt, which is your build app, and Bower, which does package management. Uh, and you can kind of see, a, Yo is from Yeoman. Yeoman is a, like a, some sort of knight. I think the guys at the Tower of London are actually Yeoman. They wear those hats, I know. Um, a Bower is obviously a bird. They store little shiny things inside of a house. So you can kind of think of Bower as package management, storing your packages inside your Bower. And Grunt's a warthog. I, I have no idea why Grunt is a warthog. Um, all righty. So how does this stuff work? Basically, the Yeoman people, in, and it's a, it's a Google-sponsored project, uh, put Yeoman out there, and they initially started with um, just a generator web app. And I don't even think it was called generator to start. Uh, but generator web app is something you can run, and all you got to have is just you need Node Package Manager. So this is all kind of built around Node. You need npm. Uh, you install yo, and then you can install your uh, your generator script. In this case, generator web app, and you run that. And it's going to give you a very basic web app uh, JavaScript app that you can start with. It's going to have HTML5 boilerplate, jQuery, Modernizer, and Bootstrap. So that was sort of the first one that they put out there. But what they also did, which was really quite smart, is they put out there an API for building your own generator scripts. And they're also um, collecting data on how often these generator scripts are being downloaded and used, which gives them some very interesting data about what kinds of frameworks are the most popular that are out there. <laughs> so instantly, there were generator scripts being added to the public, and all you have to do is just go into Node and like register your generator script when you publish it. It's very easy to get on their official list at the yeoman.io site. Um, there's three, I, last time I checked, there were 358 scripts out there. Uh, there's probably more than that at this point. Um, they also, on their page, it's very nice, they show you how many times the scripts have been downloaded, and they have like a star system too, so you can kind of tell if it's like something brand new that some guy just put up, or if it's something that's actually being used in a lot of different spots. So you can basically, as you make some decisions about what kind of stack you want to use in your JavaScript application, go out there, look through all the community generators that are there, find the one that best suits your need. And then you can start with that, and you can add things to it. Or maybe you can just use that. Uh, when we started, we knew that right off the bat, we wanted to use CoffeeScript, and not just straight up JavaScript. And um, I, I forgot to mention something, which I should have mentioned, is this is an opinionated workflow, right? So it's not a workflow system that is going to let you do whatever the hell you want to do in it. This is basically you're saying, I want to use these particular tools in my workflow. So that's, and that's basically makes sense, right? Because everything that we do when we start putting an application together is we don't think, oh, well, if I want to switch out this JavaScript library later for this other JavaScript library, how, you know, I need to make my app be able to do that. Typically, we just say, no, this JavaScript library is the best. I'm going to use it, and damn the torpedoes. So we wanted to use Jade. We wanted to use Coffee. 
Uh, we also wanted to use some other stuff. We obviously wanted to use Angular and jQuery. Uh, we wanted Jasmine as our testing framework. Uh, we wanted Node, so we're actually we're going to run a Node server using Express.js as the Node server there. Um, we wanted to use MongoDB as the database. We've since actually changed that, but uh, we were going to use Mongo as the library for that. We wanted to use uh, you know, stuff like underscore. Uh, Angular Bootstrap is an interesting uh, thing. The, the generator scripts all come pretty much with Bootstrap. Uh, I haven't seen one yet that doesn't give you the option to install Twitter Bootstrap, but uh, Angular Bootstrap is written all in Angular, so you don't need any of the JavaScript that comes with it at all. It's pretty sweet. Uh, also, the default router that comes with Angular, the ng route, is, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's not state-based, though. Angular UI router is a state-based router, and we wanted to use that, too. And then we also wanted Jade, SAS, not just CSS, CoffeeScript, whatever. So basically, we came up with this stack of different technologies that we wanted to use, right? And it so happened that there was a script out there that pretty much fit this that you could run, which would give you most of this stuff. So I'm on, oh boy. <coughs> I can't see the bottom of my screen. Why is that? Get that one. Ah, thank you. I still can't see my prompt, though. That's weird. You can see it? Oh, I can't. All right. Um, okay. Let me kill this. So I'm on their network here. I hope they don't mind. Uh, so there's several things out there. So we actually didn't use this generator script, but it's come out since then. So I've already got NPM installed. I've already got uh, the basic script installed to install Yo uh, and Grunt CLI, so um, I'm just going to download the, or rather run, I've already installed the, the generator script too that I wanted. Uh, so typically if you go to a site uh, that where the script is, they'll tell you, okay, you got to like, you got to do this, you got to do this, it'll give you the three commands that you need to get started. You just run them all from Node. Um, I am going to run yo... And then Angular dash full stack, which is the generator script that I'm going to be using. Oh, I guess I need to create my directory first. So let's make a directory. Where am I right now? Aha. Don't want to be there. So I want to start a brand new project. Let's call it the Mad Outliner. And, uh,. Let's change into there. And now I'm going to run my yo. Full stack. Um, then the name of my project. And then I'm going to provide a couple of command line things as well here. Uh, I'm going to say dash dash coffee. It'll give me coffee script instead of JavaScript. And I'm going to say dash dash j and then run that. And that's going to take a while. But first it's going to give us some prompts in just a second. There we go. So would you like to include Twitter Bootstrap? I'm going to say yes. Would you like to use the SCA? I want Compass for sure. Okay, this, this part of this process is a little bit confusing. Which modules would you like to include? Press space to select. You'd think that pressing space would actually be selecting them. But no, if they're green, that means they're already selected. So if you want all of those, Angular Resource, Angular Cookies, and Angular Sanitize, and Angular Route, you could hit Enter. I know that I don't want Angular Route, but I'm just going to go ahead and install it uh, right now with all of those. Would you like to include MongoDB with Mongoose? Well, that's... Sure. I like Mongo. All right, it's going to go do its thing. It's just going to take just a minute. And it's going to throw an error on Jade for some reason. <laughs> I'm 
you sit here and watch. So this, the, the generator scripts, while we're waiting, are kind of cool in another way too, which, I mean, they're kind of thinking of this more as like a community type thing. Uh, but let's say you're on a team and you've got a large team, you're bringing developers on and off quite a bit of the time. Uh, if you can build your own generator script to basically bootstrap everything everybody needs and scaffold the application, you basically can give three lines of you know, prompt to anybody that's starting on your team, they can type it and they can be up and running within minutes on your code base. And the generator scripts are not hard to do at all. Can you show us one of those? Hmm? Can you show us one of the scripts? Uh, I can, yeah. There's tons of them out on GitHub, too. I mean, you can just go and look at almost everything. And it should be done. Is that it? Yep, that's it. So we're done. So what did this give us? Did you get the error? Hmm? Did you get the error? For Jade? Yeah, it passed by almost immediately up at the top. It doesn't seem to make a difference, so I haven't investigated it yet. All right. Here we go. Oh, that's nice. All right. All right, so what did this give us here? So we've got an app directory, a lib directory, node modules, and test. Uh, we've got <coughs> a server.js file, which is actually our uh, express server, a package.json and a bower.json, and a grunt file. The package.json is basically where all of your dependencies are going to be installed, the M node dependencies. So anything that you would normally install via npm to get into your project, that's what's going to be in here. And you can see that we've got Express, Mongoose, Async, and Jade up here at the top. And then we've got a whole bunch of stuff for, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff just for dev <coughs> that you would get if you did the dash dash save dev for your NPM stuff. The bower.json has a very similar structure. Looks almost exactly the same. But you'll notice that these are JavaScript libraries. The... Uh, Bower stuff can basically be done the same, the exact same way. So uh, I know I didn't get, well, let me just confirm that. So inside of app here, we've got Bower components. So anything that we installed <coughs> via Bower is going to show up here under Bower components. And you've got Angular, all the, the Angular stuff, jQuery, JSON through SAS bootstrap. Um, so I know I want to use like Angular Bootstrap too. So if you need a JavaScript library, rather than like going, downloading the JavaScript library, putting it in, you know, you don't have to do any of that stuff at all. You just say Bower install, um, and then the name of the library, which is Angular Dash Bootstrap, and then um, you know, save dev or whatever. And Bower will just install it into the to the app. Boom, you're done. And if we go back, now I've got Angular Bootstrap. <coughs> um, so you can also use the stuff. There's if you look at the, and I should just. Show you some of this stuff. So on the Yeoman site itself, 
everything is here that you really need to get started. The community generators and then write your first generator where they take you through. I'm not going to be able to scroll over there though, am I? And if I do that, there we go. So they take you through the whole the whole bit. And this is actually kind of interesting. If you just type yo at a command prompt, they're really into ASCII art for some reason. <laughs> so you get this thing. And uh, this, you can actually do all this stuff here. If, if you don't even have to remember the syntax, it'll, it, you can just go through the, the whole bit. If I get me out of here, they put all their names with Yeoman at the 1.0 there at the end. Uh, all right. All right, let's talk a little bit about the various pieces that we've got here. So we've got, um, as I was saying, the, the Bower JSON and the package JSON. We also have a grunt file. The grunt file is all of the grunt configuration that we need. And if you'll notice, um, it added things like express, watch files for coffee, compass, um, and there's some stuff for Jade in here too, I think, in addition to, there should be anyway, if I did this right. Yep, there it is. So under our scripts directory is where all of our JavaScript is going to be for the application side of things. And if you'll see, they're all coffee. So it did what I wanted. It didn't put in JavaScript. It put in coffee. And under views, we've got Jade. Um, has anyone here used Jade before? Is it like commonly known about? This is the best thing since sliced bread, uh, especially if you're used to using uh, like stylus or SAS or something like that. It's writing HTML using a very similar kind of syntax. Uh, you don't ever have to write an angle bracket in your life again, which is the best part of it. Uh, you can chain things together. Uh, it uses uh, standard tags that they're used to, but everything is auto-closing. You don't ever have to close a tag. There's sites out there where you can just go take your HTML, plug it in, it'll convert it to Jade for you. It's very easy to use. It makes sense. Um, so... I highly recommend looking into it if you if you haven't <coughs> used it ever because it'll save you a lot of time and hassle ultimately. All right, so it looks like they've given us everything we wanted here. Um, how do you run it? Well, that part's pretty easy. I think I'm still in the directory, right? So you just say grunt serve or grunt server in the older versions. I'm not sure why they changed it. And this is going to start our app up. Run through all the grunt modules. And while this is starting, I should mention that the, the most powerful part of all of this really is all of the contribs that you can get through grunt. Grunt is basically clearing the way for us to get rid of all of the stuff that you don't normally want to have to think about. Um, a good example is Nensafe. Um, there's an option for most of the scripts for a lot of the community generators out there that you can run dash dash Nensafe or specify Nensafe somehow to actually generate uh, minification safe JavaScript <coughs> right off the bat. You don't have to do that though because you know there's a, there's a grunt task that at the point that you go and you put your code into production, you can just run it through an ng-min, and boom, you've got min safe code. So this is all that it gave us here. We've got our application. Uh, it installed HTML5 boilerplate, AngularJS, Karma, Express, and Mongo with Mongoose. And boom, we're up. And I can change this, of course, with the grunt live reload. If I go to, uh, well, not the controller, I want to go to the view. And let's say I want to say, hello, hello, and then switch back. Grunt live reload runs, and it's done. So you see, you change, you see the changes as you're working in the views 
boom, right away. Saves so much time not having to just press Command, Shift, R a zillion times a day. You can't believe what a pleasure that is. <coughs> All right. So... What does it look like when you do, uh, when you make an error? In your stuff, it'll throw an error in your console, actually, here. So you can see this is the grunt console that's running right now. And you can see it, it listed out the gets that I did when I hit the when I hit the root directory there, the default route. Um, and it also says file and it shows what file I changed. It'll throw an error here. And I think it beeps too, though. I wouldn't be sure about that. Because um, I have bad hearing. So. And your app won't load too. <laughs> That's the first key. You'll get a blank screen. And then you have to check the console, right? To see it, what's going on. Is it support HTML5? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, I mean, HTML5 is basically, you know, HTML5, CSS3, and uh, what's the third thing? I'm blanking. Maybe that's it. <laughs> okay. I thought there was a third well, thing. A so of JavaScript. I mean, yeah, it's JavaScript. JavaScript. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> I saw a dot header, but a lot of that stuff looked like HTML4 that was on that particular. Well, you know, um, there are ways that you can make your your in Angular make your views and stuff HTML5 compliant by using the data in G. What is it? I can't remember the exact tag. You don't have to, though. Uh, you know, at, at this point, the, the, the difference is, you know, do you get the flash before it reloads all the elements, or do you not get the flash right. before it reloads all the elements? So, uh, but it certainly supports it all if you want to write HTML5 compliant stuff. Let me change this back again, just because I like it. Um, all right, so that's changing like your views. So let's take a look at the Express Server part of this. Uh, the one thing I didn't like about this particular generator script, the full stack generator script, is that it gives you the uh, Express part of it as JavaScript instead of as coffee. Uh, there's another one out there called Angular uh, Generator Express that I use to start the actual project that I'm on, and it actually gives you the, the node server part, the express server, as, a, as CoffeeScript. Um, so, you know, at this point I would say, all right, I've got to, like, just change this stuff around to CoffeeScript, but that's not hard to do. It's just a matter of converting the JavaScript files that they give you to Coffee, and then making sure that your grunt file is going to be watching those CoffeeScript files and converting them for you. Um, so let's look at this. This is a pretty standard um, Express server config file. We've got Express. We've got uh, Mongo as a requirement. So notice it's this lib thing here. This, this was another thing I thought was a little bit jinky about this. Um, they put the server under lib. I would have named it server, but, you know, whatever. So if we look under lib, we've got controllers. We've got database stuff, and we've got our models. And they basically provide us a thing model. Uh, they provide a way to uh, generate that thing model through this dummy data.js file. And if you look here, it's providing HTML5 boilerplate, AngularJS. So this is all the stuff that we're actually seeing on that screen there. So if I want... can just add something here and say, uh, uh, I've added, uh, what did I add, Angular Bootstrap. Yes, Eric, my computer is slow. You should get me a new one. <laughs> I think I messed. Did I mess that up? <laughs> it's JavaScript, so it doesn't matter. But uh, all right, did that work? 
No, it didn't. Yeah. Oh, no, it did work. I just needed to reload. So, basically what's happening here is that the grunt file is restarting every time it detects a change in any of these files, and we can actually see that on the console. Stopping the Express server, starting the background Express server. When the Express server starts, as part of the routine that it runs through, it requires, where is it? It requires uh, lib dummy data. So it's going to run that every time. That's going to run, it's going to populate those tables into, now I do have Mongo running locally here. Uh, the, the script to connect to Mongo, which is right here, if you look, will basically let you connect to Mongo Lab or Mongo HQ uh, or your local running instance. So you got to have one of those three going for it so that it can have something to connect to. Um, but I've got it running local and it connected there. It populated that stuff in there. And then we've got a REST API here, which is using Mongoose and the thing object. And it's saying uh, that if somebody hits uh, slash API slash awesome things, it's going to return to you uh, what it finds in the Mongo data database that has the thing object. Uh, this is just gives you what it's going to do if it errors out and how it's going to call that controller and the APIs. So inside, that's, that's our, and the, and the beauty of this structure is that the entire node application is a separate server basically from the JavaScript application. So all of our front-end code is under app here while all of the uh, node stuff is under lib. So under app in our Angular application here, the front-end to it is basically app.coffee which has some routes in it. It's got some require stuff here and then um, it's got a route provider and a location provider. So it's saying when the route provider is slash, use the partials main uh, template with this particular controller, otherwise go to slash. And then set the behavior to HTML5 mode. So right now if we hit um, slash, it's basically gonna load partials main. So what's partials main? So that's our view. That's our Jade file right here. And it's going to use the main controller, which is the main.coffee file under controllers. So that controller, uh, for our particular application here, angular.module, is going to call API awesome things. It's going to return that, and it's going to set that in the scope of the uh, main.jade file, which is doing an ng repeat over thing and awesome things, showing the thing.name and the thing.info. Yeah? Um, main.jade, is that compiled to HTML? Yes. That yeah, so there's, there's a, uh, in, inside of the grunt file again, there's a, a watcher, which is basically watching for any changes in the jade files, and when it sees those, it's going to make HTML files for them. And main, is it main.html then? Or is yeah. Main yeah. Yeah, so... Yep, yep. What kind of control do you have over caching? Site, caching in the browser? Site, site caching, no, not browser, uh, server caching. You, I would think you'd have to add something yourself if you wanted to do that. Or is there a JavaScript caching engine that you recommend, Eric? Uh, Usually we try to prevent caching, <laughs> so <laughs> I spend most of my time setting headers so that I don't have to cache. For doing that sort of thing? Yeah, Nginx usually. Just deploy it to like a little 
Yeah, well, okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you said that, actually, because if you go to the uh, Angular generator <clears throat> stack. <clears throat> they have a link to the website here. Yeah, here we go. The Daft Monk. Um, one of the things that you can do with this, actually, which is very nice, and they show you how to do it right here, is generate it for Heroku and deploy it. So basically, if you've got Heroku set up, you can get it up on Heroku in five steps there with Mongo. And it's pretty much as fast as, you know, you saw me run the script before. It doesn't take that long to run it. All right. Where was I? I was talking about the controller, right? When last we left? Um, all right. So one of the things I mentioned earlier was that we wanted to use um, Angular UI router instead of the default router that comes with. So what's involved in replacing that? Um, you kind of go through those steps. I'm going to clear some stuff off the screen here. So our app.coffee is where our routes are, right? Um, we've got to get Angular UI Router installed, first of all. We don't have it. Uh, it's not in Bower Components. So let's install that. So let's go back to here. Uh, I can actually leave this running. I'm going to kill it just to be mean. <laughs> And, uh, oh, I named the, I misspelled the app when I created the app. That's terrible. Um, now i got to start over again. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to install Angular Bootstrap. So the, yeah, I wrote the name down here, I know. Yeah. In UI router? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I've already got that one. Oh yeah, here it is. Angular dash UI dash router. So that's all we gotta do to install it. Now, I should have mentioned this earlier. So one of the things that it's doing when you're installing all this stuff and when it's installing everything through the script is it's making those libraries available to the JavaScript application. And the way it does that is it basically, and we got Angular URI, I don't know if you see. It basically adds that stuff into your index file. So if you look at, um, you know, the Angular website, they basically say the easiest way to get these things included is just to put them into your index.html. So you can see here that as I'm doing Bower install, blah, 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 it's actually adding these into my index.html for me. So I don't have to worry about doing that little piece in order to get it into the application. It's just doing it automatically as I run the Bower install command. So it's, it's available to the app at this point. Um, now. Just, just a quick, quick mm -hmm. question on that. So as part of the grunt process or something else, are there, are there are tools available to consolidate all of those into a single file so you don't have to do like three dozen server hits to get each, each little piece. There oh, are. Okay. And actually, when you when you go to production, uh, it comes with a default like dist uh, grunt target built in already, right there. And one of the targets that it runs is a um, what is it, Eric? You did it all. You didn't do it with this. <laughs> yeah, he had to do a bunch of work, but it, it, it's, uh, where is it? You manually minify all your JavaScript files? Every single time. There's some of these sets with, you know, can you think by hand in doing it? <laughs> Here, there, it's running them all through image min, SVG min, and HTML min. Um, you know, it may not come with this by default, but there's an ng min task 
that's available in Grunt that you can add in here. Is it further up? Maybe down from there, but there it is. Yeah. I, I think it goes through and it actually replaces all of the module references with the strings that it needs in order to work in the minified fashion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's an interesting little utility out there called um, grunt-bower-install that a guy created. And um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Oh, yeah, there it is. Stephen Plus Plus. It's an interesting last name. <laughs> um, this will basically, if you set this up, you have to do a little bit of work here, but it will inject them in. Um, as you uh, well now I'm trying to remember why I needed this at one point I can't remember but basically you, you take and you add this little uh, HTML tag into your index.html or index.jade and then as you add things it will automatically put them in there for things that it don't normally get installed that way automatically. All right, it may not be needed anymore. It looks like it's doing it now. All right. Um, I was talking about Angular UI router, wasn't I? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so there's a couple of things for Angular URI Router you have to do. One is you have to change in the index.jade file. One of the nifty things about this is that here is where your all your HTML goes. Basically goes into that div right there, and it uses uh, the ng view directive to do that. So Angular URI Router comes with its own directive, which is called UI view. So you have to change that there to get to Angular URI Router. The other thing you have to do is to change your, your, your route provider. Um, I'm not sure if I remember how to do this off the top of my head, so I have an example <laughs> that I will show you <laughs> that it's already done in. Uh, where is it? Okay. So here's an example of one using Angular UI Router. And the difference here is that instead of just passing a route in, and having the browser redirect to a particular route, a particular page, you're actually just setting states. And it makes a lot of sense because most of what we do inside of a JavaScript application is basically just changing the state of the application. From, we're not really changing from page to page most of the time. Sometimes we're changing the state so that a particular part of the page is different, particular templates getting loaded, subsection, what have you. Uh, and this allows you to do that in a very clean nice way. So you set states. Uh, instead of the route provider, you have a state provider. Uh, you have a URL router provider, uh, which is a little bit different. And then in your state provider, you basically define what different states are. So you can see here that I took the default state that they provided as a route, set it up here. The syntax looks almost exactly the same. Uh, I added a new route or a new state, in this case here, and gave it a different template and a different controller. The last piece you have to do is you have to add this UI.router here so that um, it can use the new thing. But once you do those three things, basically, <coughs> that's all you have to do to get Angular UI router into it. And do you, can you nest, or do you nest these as well? Yes. In a single yes. They, uh, they have a, uh, there's several ways that you can define like a default. And that default can be like a, um, I forget the term they use, it's generic or, I can't remember. Basically you say this is like the, the parent for all these other things, and then you nest those other things underneath of that. And they can each have different controllers, they can have the same controller. Um, it's The example that they give on the UI-router site is of like a, 
a view where you have like four or five different frames and you want to switch out content in just one frame, changing the state of stuff, uh, rather than having to like reload the whole page all the time. It, it works very, very nicely. All right. So I'm going to go back and undo that change that I made. Actually, I'm not running it anymore, am I? Well, let me show you. Um, <laughs> I have to autocomplete to get it now because I misspelled it. Um, show you a couple of things about the generator script, too. So, in addition to being able to just run the script and get everything scaffolded, you can also. Um, install individual things as you're working. Here we go. So these are all, these are all the generator, like the sub-generators that are available for this particular one. So if we went and add a new controller, all we have to do is say colon controller, name the controller, new directive, colon directive, name the directive, etc., etc. So if you want to, for example, add a new controller, And what do we want to call the controller? Mad Eric. <laughs> You're mad, Eric. Boom, it's done. So you can see it created the controller in maderic.coffee and the app script controller. It also created a test. And I should take a, uh, remind me to talk about karma in a second. Um, and if we go and we look, we'll see it. Sure enough, we now have our new controller. And also, if we look in index.jade, it should be in here too. And sure enough, it is. So all we would have to do to get this to work is to add a new route for it. Um, and then we could hit it. Same with directives, same with filters, whatever. All you have to do, rather than having to go in, copy, remember that you got to add it to index.jade, uh, put it in the right directory, blah, 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 blah. Just don't worry about that, any of that. Just say, yo, name of your generator, colon, name of the thing that you're going to add, filter, whatever it is, and then you're done. All right, so karma. Um, I suspect that most of the people that download these things never even try to run the test because it does not work out of the box at all. <laughs> um, first of all, you, you got to have, right? huh? You did though. I only tried because I knew I had to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually very frustrating to me because, like every single testing framework I've ever tried to use, they just don't freaking work. <laughs> it really pisses me off. It ought to be the one thing that always works really easy. It's a testing of itself, just to see how you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sort of is, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think I can run this from here, not from a level up. But let's see. So you got to have Karma installed. It didn't install Karma for me. Why? I don't.